Well, hello, my friends. This is Caleb Byerly. I want to just so, show you this uh, Tagal Harpa here. This is a Scandinavian type instrument. Uh, also, a Viking instrument is also called a bowed harp. Um, and there's many different variations of this type of instrument, but this is what I make. Of course, it comes with a bow, and there are horsehair strings. So I just want to kind of go over this instrument a little bit to kind of give you an idea, as well as if you get one, uh, how to get started playing it. Um, there are um, many different styles of this instrument like I explained before but I'm just going to go over the, 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 the kind that I make and um, that way if you get one from me you know how to get started with it. So um, anyway all right so here we go. This, uh, in, this body of this instrument is made out of walnut. Really beautiful dark wood and then on the top is Sitka spruce. Um, it's got these have wooden tuners uh, right here, but I also they also can come with the uh, the friction tuners, which are made out of uh, plastic and metal, and it, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of turn. And I've got a tuner here. This is just one that I downloaded on my phone. It's called Pano Tuner. I like it quite a bit. It's good. I also have some electric tuners that um, can be used as well. You could get an analog tuner. Just anything that picks up frequency and can tell you what chromatic note it is. So, right now when I hit this note, it's telling me that it's a little bit in the key of C. I'll show you. Watch. So it says C. Dun. So, I need to tune this up to F. And so the way I do is I hold this, like so, and I'm going to get my hand here on the peg for that note, or for that string, and I tune it, go keep going up until I get to F. As you can tell, it's just around F, and I don't have to be exact because I can come back through over here where the tailpiece is to that microtuner later and get it microtuned to the exact pitch. So let's go to the next one. The next one would be F, um, C, so it goes F, C, F, C. So the next one would be C. The next one is F. And the next one is C, but it's the octave lower. So it's a low C. See that one? And then the, the one, the second string right here is a high C. And then this one's low C. Okay, so let's go back over the whole thing, starting from the top, and, and tune it again. But the reason why is because sometimes when after you tune these strings, the ones that you tuned before get a little bit off. So we'll go over again. There we go, F, C, F, C. I got it really pretty close, so now I'm going to micro-tune it with these guys. All 
All right, when I turn clockwise, it makes the pitch go higher. When I turn it counterclockwise, it goes lower. All right, this next one is C. Okay, next one. There we go, FC, FC. So this right here is called Rosin, and you can get this all different brands that make it. You can get it at music stores. It's the thing that violinists and celloists and violists use to uh, put on their strings and their bows. And what it does is without, without, when you use your bow here, if you do not have Rosin on it, when you put the the bow onto the string and you and you move it, it's not going to make a, a good sound. You want it to sound. You want all the strings to resonate. If they do not resonate really well, then most likely it's because the contact between the bow and the strings does not have enough friction. So it's not making the strings vibrate. So that's why you use rosin. Rosin creates a contact between the, the bow and the string. Okay, so you can see like right here on the strings, maybe. Let me hold this up for you so you can see it. You can see on the string, the strings are color black. But when they get up to this point, they kind of turn white. And that's because I have done like this a whole lot of times to put rosin on the strings. So this is what you need to do if it doesn't have enough rosin. I put the rosin on the first two strings and I go up and down with some pressure. And I keep going until it makes that sound. And then I go to the next And I do these bottom two. I just keep going until there's a good layer of white, kind of white rosin on the top of it. And then I do the same with the bow. And this bow already has a lot of rosin. You can see the white on there. So that's got a bunch on there already. So, uh, but what I do is I make, I take my hand here. I put it onto the string to give it some pressure, not a whole lot of pressure, but just enough pressure. And that's so it's kind of like this. It's not loose like this. It's not a little bit loose or a little bit tight, but it's kind of tight. If I make it too tight, then it'll it will bend bend the the bow here too much. And then I put my rosin on there, and I just take smooth strokes like this. And you don't want to put too much because too much will create too of a too much of a kind of grainy, scratchy sound. All right, so that's what you want. All right, when it comes to playing the instrument. I'm just going to give you a few little tips here just to get started. Uh, there are some other YouTube videos, I'm sure, that are out there. But I'm just going to give you basics here just to how to get started. So what you do is you, you hold it kind of in your left hand here. And you're going to hold the bow in your right hand. And you put a little bit of tension on the bow. So I usually like to just... Um, put, you know, hold the bow with my thumb and my first finger and then take the, take the strings or the, uh, the hairs and just put some tension, not too much tension because you don't want to strain the bow, but you want, you know, some pretty good tension there so it's not floppy. Now, to make, uh, to make strokes, you're just going to basically 
place the bow onto the strings um, evenly. This is not like a violin that has uh, a violin has an arched bridge. This has a flat bridge, and the reason why is because it gives you the ability to play all the all of these strings at the same time. I would start off with just learning how to play the bow. So you can take, take you know, you can go all the way to the end, but I don't re recommend all the way going to the end. I recommend stopping, you know, about about where the where the bow meets the end of the instrument there. And then you, you go, you can go up to about right here where your hand gets close to the instrument. So make sure that you're you're taking good smooth strokes and just get used to that at first. You want to play all of the strings. You don't want to just be like that's just playing one or two song uh, one or two strings. But if you play all of them, it will sound like this. Okay, this note right here, this bottom one. Is the lowest note that's the C and it is going to be a drone so you're not gonna be chanting on that note or that string as well as this one right here you're not gonna be chanting on this string as well you're gonna be chanting mostly on this string which is the the, the second to the top string this one right here and what I mean by chanting is that that's going to be the melody line. That's when you, you get your left hand fingers and you put it on there, just placing it just really nice and easy. And it's going to change the pitch of that string. And then sometimes you can go to the first string. This is the first string right here. You can, you can move your finger to that one and play that as well. But mostly, what most players do is they allow the first string, the third string, and the fourth string to be drone notes. Meaning they all you're all they're doing is playing those that one note that that string provides, and then with the second string you go up and down to create the melody lines. Okay, if I hope that hopefully that didn't confuse you, but I'll kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about. Watch my left finger. I know it's a look I don't have the best background for you to see, but watch my left hand and the fingers to see how I'm going up and down that string. Okay, see how I did that, and then I can move to the first string. Give me an example of that, how I'm going to play the first string. Once you start playing it yourself, it's gonna, you're gonna pick it up. So practice, practice, practice always helps. Um, just a few maintenance tips I want to talk about. Every once in a while, you're gonna need to re-rosin your bow and your strings. So if it if it starts to feel like it's getting a little bit out of um, contact between the strings and the bow then you're going to need to to do that um, and I showed you how to do that earlier so you just reapply but you're not going to have to do as much because there's rosin already on there 
Um, just keep the instrument in a safe, pretty safe environment. Um, not too much humidity and not too dry. Um, make sure that it doesn't get a lot of rain on it. And just make sure it stays pretty clean. Um, I would just recommend that you just um, just just keep it out of the direct sunlight. I mean, you can take it outside, but when you take it outside and the sunlight gets on it, then it's going to start changing the pitch of the strings, and it could, uh, if it stayed out there for a long time, it can affect the the acoustic uh, properties of these of these pieces of wood and everything put together. Another thing to consider is the back side of these tuners here. You know, whenever you're holding them and you're tuning them, a lot of times if they are not wedged in there enough, then when you try to tune, the string is going to pull it back and it's going to go out of tune. It's going to go out of pitch, like lower in pitch. Um, I'll see if I can give you an example. Okay, so let's just say that you're, hold on, I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. Okay, so let's just say that you are trying to tune this, this second string right here. Okay, and right now I don't have it pushed into the hole enough. And so when I try to tune it up, I can tune it. But when I let go of the tuner... Listen what happens. It just went out of tune. So what I need to do is I need to push, I need to push this in pretty much as far as it could possibly go. Okay, and then and what that does is it, it makes good the 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 tuner makes really good contact with the wood. And that way, when I get it in tune, I can let go of it, and it and it's going to hold its pitch. Yeah, so that's it. All right, well, I hope that that helps you get to know the Tagal Harpa a little bit better. And... You can always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we have a really good team of uh, people that help out with this kind of thing. So feel free to reach out to us at Evergreen Instruments. And um, enjoy your instrument. Alright, bless you guys. Bye-bye.